Roll it up. More than these values. In other words, you need to be less than negative point six two six. All right, you guys. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this question. It's a hard one. It says talking about credit cards how many they ask people how many credit cards do you have the results of the survey are provided so where are the results in in this blue thing or what so if I click this well I may want to click that in a second but it says determine the mean number of credit cards well we know how to do that you guys aren't confused on that right you know how to find the mean number of credit cards you open in stack crunch and then to find the mean all you do is go to what you guys know how to do this you go to stat calc oh no stat summary stats column pick the first one and then press compute right so that's how you find the mean what is it 3.08 so I can go over here close this press 3.08 how's that you guys good with that You're not sharing. you can't see my screen no. okay hold on no Oh, okay. Now we see. So 3.08. All right, press enter. It says that's not correct, and then you say, "Oh no, round to three, round to three decimal places, three decimal places." Oh, oh wait, oh, the mean is correct. Got it. So this is asking for the standard deviation. Okay, so for the standard deviation, let's see where was it over here. So there's there's the population standard deviation and the sample standard deviation. Does that matter here? I'm gonna. I don't think so. No, only ask the but will they? Do they? How do we know that it, this is the sample standard deviation, right? Yeah, that's what they are asking. But how do we know from the question? It just says the word standard deviation. It doesn't say population or sample. So do, do we know that this is a? Oh, it's a survey, so it's a sample. Right, Okay, so it's a sample, so then we could use standard deviation. Got it. So then now we go back over here, we come over here, we grab the standard deviation. They want three decimal places, right? So, okay. Make sure you round that correctly, so since the number to the right is three, we're good with that. Control C, come over here, press Control V, press check answer, good. Alright, so you guys are good with that. Now, a probability distribution. I'm not sure how you handled this one, but let's see. Hmm, how do we get a probability distribution? We could... We have the mean... Okay, so what did you guys do? You went, you clicked this, you went into StatCrunch, and you made a table? Frequency table, you clicked the variable one, and then what did you do? frequency just press compute and it, it gives you one two three so it automatically did it how you wanted right so, okay right. that works we, we had to turn that into, uh, so you went to edit okay so then you went to edit and then you did relative you could yeah oh, that. yeah yeah all right <laughs> here we go here we go 0.12 0.33 3. Point three. So yeah, you guys can do that, right? You saw what I did, right? I just, I just hit relative, and then it, it was good to go. For six, I'm gonna put point zero 0.01. For seven, I'm gonna put and point zero 0.02. That's it. You guys are fine with this. Now, no, okay. For this distribution, I mean, the highest probabilities are in one and two, so we should see a peak in the beginning, right? So. This is the only one that has the peak at 1 and 2, so that's the answer. See how I got that? The peaks are right there. Just press check answer. Uh, the shape of that distribution, I think it's right skewed. The distribution is unimodal. Oh, has one mode? Or does it have two modes? Let me see. Would you guess? Oh, there's one mode because it has one peak. Has one mode and is skewed right, right? Because there's a tail on the right. Okie dokie. Determine the mean and standard deviation. We can find the mean and standard deviation. In fact, it's, this is interesting. It says determine the mean and standard deviation number of credit cards from the probability distribution. Very interesting. Yeah, I think you were supposed to make the chart. 
Yeah, so we gotta copy this chart, right? Is that what we do? We copy the chart? Press copy, come into stack crunch. Close this, press control V. And then just, how do we find the mean? Uh, do we do summary stats and then groups? How, do, how, do we, how are we doing this these days? What if we, what if, what if we do calculator custom? Yeah, but ca remember we do calc values and this is the way we've been doing it in like chapter six, remember? So why don't we try it the chapter six way to get the mean and standard deviation? Look at that. That's kind of cool doing it the chapter six way, right? Yeah, I did. I did stat calculator custom and it even gave me that graph, right? I put the values that were in variable three and then the the what ah, the weights are in variable four, right? And I just press compute and it even gives me this little graph. Remember, we were, we were trying to get a picture of that graph. So that's kind of cool. So 3.08. Let's see. 3.08. And then the standard to 3. So 1.853. It's a little bit different. 8.53. Alright, so now we're probably this is the point where you guys is well, let me see determine the probability of randomly selecting an individual whose number of credit cards is more than two standard deviations from the mean so this is the question that most people i would think had would not be able to do is this where you guys struggled or what okay the probability of a randomly selecting an individual whose number of credit cards is more than two standard deviations from the mean Let's see, what's a... Let me get Desmos. What was the mean? 3.08? So minus two standard deviations. What was the standard deviation? And which standard deviation do we want? And which one do we want to use? There was two separate standard deviations, so that's a little bit weird. But it probably doesn't matter. You get the same answer no matter what. So that's, that's one of the standard deviations, right? By the way, let me do something cool. Hey! And I wonder if I can do this to be even cooler. Hey. So I get that and then I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna press control C, go over here, control V, change this to plus. So I get two values. I get one value to the left. Now, what did I just do? The question said to remind you, what percentage of observations would be greater than two standard deviations, I believe. Let me find the, the exact wording again. Determine the probability of randomly selecting an individual whose credit whose number of credit cards is more than two standard deviations from the mean. That's this is this is hard. An individual whose number of credit cards. So we want to find the probability that we get an individual whose number of credit cards is more than two standard deviations from the mean. Well, two standard deviations from the mean we just found. Hopefully I can get them. Where, where are they? Okay, let me, let me do this. Okay, so two standard deviations from the mean is negative 0.626 and then 6.786. So we need to be more than these values. In other words, we need to be less than negative 0.626 uh, credit cards. Well, that's impossible because zero or one, I think were the minimum. So the, as far as the, that negative 0.626, that's irrelevant. The only relevant value is 6.786. So someone has to have more than 6.786 credit cards. Does that make sense? It's, it's, it's just basically asking more. Yeah. Yeah. Who's who's number? Yeah, whose number of credit cards is more than two standard deviations from the mean? Yeah, less than two standard deviations would be would mean I would I would take all the numbers smaller than six point seven, which would be one to six to six. So I don't know if you guys are following this, but so 
Now think about this for a second. Think about this. Think about this distribution here. Now we said more than 6.7, right? So what is more than 6.7 credit cards? Someone... Nine, ten. Exactly. 7, 8, 9, 10. So all I got to do is add these probabilities here. Oops. <laughs> so I add 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0 0.01, 0 0.02. So 2 plus 2, that's 4, 5, 6, 7. So, and now I know my answer, 7. Because I added those numbers. Watch. The probability is 0 0.07. That's it. That's how you do it. That's a hard one. Does that make sense? That's a tough one. I don't know. Well, what do you I thought I put that as well, but you're not wrong. Well, your answers could be a different probabilities, right? And you're, you may not have 2212. You might have 2312, right? So, 3131, so that's, that's 8. That would be 0 0.08, right? Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 0 0.08. This result is not unusual because the probability is greater than 0 0.05. What else? Uh, what else? Should we keep going on G? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Determine the probability of randomly selecting two individuals who are issued exactly two credit cards. Ooh, dang. Oh my goodness, not this one. Yikes, yikes, yikes. This is a tricky one. Hint, are the events independent? Oh my goodness. Okay, randomly selecting two individuals who are issued exactly two credit cards. Hmm. I'm assuming that they're independent. That That's what would make this problem doable, is if it's independent and we were able to just multiply the probabilities. For instance, well, what's the probability of getting two? Probability of getting that you have two, you have two credit cards well we can get that from our probability distribution i think we can right so this is equal to something what's the probability that we have two credit cards i don't know we can go up right and check so 33 percent point 33 right so if i go back here let me click here so i know that's 0 0.33 so if it's independent by the way let me Make it so you can see that a little bit easier. If it's independent, then I'm just gonna say 0 0.33 times 0 0.33, and it's gonna be 10.89%. So that's how you do that one, right? Because if you think, this is a tough one. It says determine, oh, okay, hold on. Determine the probability of randomly selecting two individuals who are issued exactly two credit cards. So for the first, if I said, determine the probability of selecting one individual who is issued two credit cards the answer would be 0.33 does that make sense yeah because because the probability distribution for two is 0.33 but for two individuals now instead of just one i could just multiply 0.33 times 0.33 because that's what we do with independence we just we're able to just multiply and i think i got 10.89 round to three decimal places i'm gonna do <laughs> 10.89 I'm gonna do that maybe 10.89 <coughs> was 0 0.1089 right so that's kind of how you do that one that was weird but that's how you do that one does that make sense or is that like kind of cart okay cool let's see what else how far do we got to go on this let's see interpret this result select the correct choice below and fill in the answer box with your choice I wish this thing was easier to look at. Okay. Whenever multiple people are surveyed, how about whenever a couple applies? Okay. If two individuals were randomly selected, I like that one. Yeah. I like that yeah, one. That one always yeah. Yeah. We would expect what? 11? Yeah. Because point one. That's basically 0.11 rounded, 0.11, 11%, right? So that's 11, right? Yeah. Hey, did we finish? Ooh, all right, we finished.